are a few minutes late to your own dog because your lesson was ski race down the street. It got postponed by an hour because of ski conditions. And everybody there is going, you did a great lesson because there's enough snow that we can have the race. <laughs> I wish I could take responsibility, but I can't. <laughs> Welcome to Jackson and Jackson Community Church. I'm Gail, and we are so glad that you're here. And we're sure the church is just in time. People are still showing up. But we're going to begin with any announcements that people have for the life of the church or the community. And then we'll pass the keys. So, announcements. See, this Wednesday with the ladies book meeting here at the church at 10.30, I decided that... Uh, Maybe we'll play a little bit and do some dim sum if anybody's interested. Anybody want to play and make a pop sticker or a wonton, you're more than welcome to come on Wednesday and play. And you get to go home with it, too. Great, so there's a women's group meeting. Let's switch to this. Can you hear me? Right. There's a women's group meeting on Wednesday at 10.30. It's social, there's usually food, today there's a, or that day there's going to be a cooking lesson. The other thing that is happening on Wednesday, and we're still welcoming volunteers, is that we are doing a human count. It's a point in time count of our homeless population here in the valley. And um, the way station, which is uh, a fairly new organization that this church is instrumental in having helped to co-found, and to help operate will be through the hub of doing that volunteering in the Conway area. So if you are interested in participating, Jeanette, would you raise your hand? Jeanette is also on our board of directors and she's helping to coordinate our volunteers. So please give your name to Jeanette and we'll give you an assignment. That's Wednesday, it's a 24 hour period. So if you have any time, any time on Wednesday and you want to help us, feel free. Other announcements? Alan. Um, I just want to give a quick update on um, my cousin who had a fire in his house and lost. Their, right. Um, their house um, has been fully built and they uh, they moved right. in around Christmas time. Um, kind of made it set a bit. And they're still uh, kind of overwhelmed with all the help they've received. So they're very appreciative. They just haven't gotten a chance to get back to everybody that's helping them out. So um, but they're much better. Any other announcements for the life of the church or the community? All right, then, uh, please, we would love you to pass the peace, make someone that you don't know welcome, or greet a friend, and just be the amiable, happy church. Hey, God, bless you. You have to get back to
is that next weekend, we will be having a visiting youth group up here. It's a middle school, high school youth group. They're going to come up. They, they've been doing this annually since I came, because they come from the time I came from in Massachusetts, the following. And uh, they, they hang out with our youth. So they're coming up. They'll be here Friday night. They'll be here all day Saturday. On um, Saturday morning, there's a community service project and lunch with a few of the guests at Waste Station. Kevin is going to be talking to um, youth, whoever comes, both from Jackson and from Ipswich. And then they'll be skiing in the afternoon, cross-country skiing, and then do have dinner again. So for, for our youth, middle school and up, anybody that wants to come for any part of that, you are so welcome. We would love to have some friendly faces from this neck of the woods welcoming people from further south. So uh, see me if you're interested, and I'll just collect contact information and give you more information. But that's my mistake. So, so welcome one more time, and please rise for Psalm 445, Be Thou My Vision, which you can find in the red version. about, again, about 
Detective Gamache using the four sentences, I don't know, I need help, I was wrong, and I'm sorry. And today, our launching point for the ways that we are reflecting is the I don't know, and where that might take. Now is the time in the service when if you have any prayers of celebration or concern, you can say them out loud. We will hold a moment of silence and we will say together the Lord's Prayer. So are there any things that you wish to lift up out loud? Jeanette. A lot of the people I don't know. I don't really know what's going on in Zimbabwe right now. When I get, it was Alpha's birthday this week, so I sent her a note. They always come back and say, hi, we're fine, how are you doing? Um, and I don't, I don't know. So I'd like prayers for them um, in the uncertainty. Also, something that we have done a very poor job of advertising is the conference oh. is offering, or they're having a trip to Zimbabwe in the neighboring year. And the mission committee, I, it's not a good time for me to go. So um, we're saying if anyone at all is interested in going to Zimbabwe, the mission committee, thousand dollars towards the cost of your trip. So if you are or thinking about it or may have an interest, let me know. Thank you. I'd like to catch up on what's really going on. Thank you, Jim. So in case people aren't aware, we have an ongoing partnership between the New Hampshire Conference and the Nation of Zimbabwe through the United Church of Christ. We have partner churches and our partner church is the Chikanda Church in the city of Mutare, in the nation of Zimbabwe. And several years ago, Jeanette was actually able to visit there and make very strong connections with that congregation. Um, we continue to hold them in our prayers, and we do hear from time to time, but as Jeanette alluded, we don't really know what's going on for them right now. Sometimes it's not safe to uh, communicate any kind of criticism of the government or the situation in which people are living, but we do know that it's not good. Very like 90, over 90 percent unemployment. Uh, there's almost no cash currency even circulating, so their economy is really devastated. And we continue to pray for their fortitude and resilience in the face of such overwhelming obstacles. And see Jeanette, if you're interested in going to Zimbabwe, can tell you more about how we can help you go. Kevin. Try and speak, but my voice is kind of... Uh, and for I don't know, like we're talking about, yeah. I don't know why people um, sometimes judge a book by its cover. Like last night I went to the benefit dinner and the lady said, um, she said, this isn't the community meal. And I said, I'm not here for the community meal. I can afford to pay for the benefit dinner. So obviously she was judging me yeah. by my looks, which mm -hmm. is okay, I'm used to that, but it's really sad because they don't see what's inside of me. They only see what's on the outside. Right. And I actually feel bad for them. Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm rich inside my heart and soul, and that's what matters. And some people will never have that. But mm -hmm. I, I, I pray for people like that. And um, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to pray for Roman Gale and our church, because Roman Gale and our church have done so much for me. And uh, I want to do so much back, but I can only do so much. And, and I'll do as much as I can. And I'm very grateful to this church and the United Church of Christ, because they've done so much. So Kevin was just mentioning that he felt like somebody read his appearance and didn't think that he could afford to go to the fundraising concert last night, which was indeed for the way station, um, which has been a supporter for Kevin and other members of our community, and which is supported in turn by many churches in this battle, not just by several churches, and starting with Nathan Lee Lutheran. Um, but part of our not knowing, and we'll think about it today, is we don't know what's on the inside of people, right? And that's what Kevin was talking 
about. So prayers for us to take the breath and be curious about other people instead of making assumptions that we know based on what we see, what is in space, but we're not with life and heart and mind. Other prayers for this community or this world. Jean. May I ask that you keep in mind for the next three months my granddaughter's husband, Jeff Ledger, uh, out in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, who is a well-known extreme skier, was a well-known extreme skier. He, last week, he went off a mountain and jumped and came down on the rocks. He just got out of the hospital in uh, Salt Lake City. Um, he has to have several more operations, but he shattered his pelvis completely and broke his arms and has had new plates where his ribs used to be. And he's going to be in bed for three months before they can even attempt to patch up all the other things. And they uh, pray for both he and his wife, Sean, I think it's going to be a big job caring for him for the next three months in that condition. And his other. So for anyone that didn't hear that, Jean's grandson-in-law, Jeff, who is an extreme skier in Wyoming, had a ski accident, and it is quite severe. Last weekend, we weren't sure that he would survive. So the first gift is that he is with us, but this does not lessen the challenge before him and all those who love him. So we hold Jeff and Sean and Bree and Jean and their whole family and all those who will be part of Jeff's journey to restore what is possible to restore in his body and reclaim his life in probably new and surprising ways. We will hold all of these people in our prayers. Other prayers? Um? for those with the uncertainty of a, an unknown diagnosis, who are waiting for answers, who don't have answers, and live in the tension and the anxiety and not knowing of such challenges. But of course, and if you've ever been with us, you know by now that we bring heavy things into this prayer time and that we need reminders of joy and healing. And so we frequently turn to our world, this beautiful world in which we live, for those signs of hope. And so, Sue. So, unfortunately, our friendly herd of deer have returned to the top of Glen Ledge and they are scoping out all the snacks and treats that they consumed last year. However, when they got to my property, they said, wait a minute, there's nothing there, because they ate it all. <laughs> so, they're back. It's a warning. So the deer are snacking all over Glen Lake, mm. but apparently Sue doesn't have any snacks left no. in her yard for them, so she's maybe grateful but also a little dismay for her neighbors and their shrubberies and their flowers. I can see their tracks all over my snow, and they make the same tracks every night. Okay. Um, all the wildlife I've heard is some coyotes near my apartment building when I'm outside at night. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I see it like someone has a dog or I see someone's cat, and I, I love to see that because I love it. I can't wait till the birds and butterflies come back. The birds are out. If you go on any of the tin mountain uh, field trips, you'll get to see the boreal birds. You know, for instance, the white-winged crossbills are out. And they are quite striking. Uh, so for the birds that are here and the birds yet to come, and the coyotes singing at night, are there other things that help us find some gratitude and joy that you want to share? New babies also count. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And, you know, Joy, as we said, the racers were expressed in the fact that they couldn't even have this race as a big deal. They had to shorten it. They had to change the course, but they were able to do it. So every year that there's snow on the ground and people can get out there and have fun and remember why they love the world is a wonderful day. And that's one of the gifts of being in this place. Let's pray. Oh, holy God, we are already in conversation with you. You have heard the prayers that were raised up at 8 o'clock. You have heard the prayers and the requests of people's hearts for that race. And here in this gathering, you hear us. You hear the names and the places that we lift up. We ask that you will hear what goes unspoken in our hearts, unsaid that we hold in our minds and in our bodies, and that you will be present to all of these awarenesses and help us and be with us in all things. Listen now to our silence. Hear us as we pray out loud, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. And Jean, if you would come forward, you're our reader today, right? We have a bunch of short snippets for you about not knowing.
second page of those readings, but you can hear that God has this theme going on throughout the Bible about knowing. And before we start into the sermon, we are going to take a survey, so I need help from people that are willing to count, so I'm hoping Autumn and Mike, Dad, and Molly and Macy, will you help me count people if they're going to raise their hand? Not that we're picking on men in the congregation, but this did come up as a theme at the 8 o'clock, and I think it's probably going to prove fairly true. So you guys get up, and we're going to have to have, like, uh, yeah, Autumn and Michael, I hope you go on that side, and you guys can do this aisle. And we're going to ask men and women, in the last seven days, raise your hand if you asked somebody for directions. Did anybody ask for directions anywhere at all? Okay, Sue did. Oh, what? Kevin did? That's what we Does Google count? Google count? of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. So, okay, Detective Gamash gave us those four sentences, and today we're focusing on the I don't know. And the first thing, you guys can push back if if you think I'm wrong, but we talked about it at 8 o'clock, and it seems to me that if you are sure you know something, you might either assert it very forcefully, or you might be incredibly comfortable and confident and just be relaxed and, you know, 
be in a conversation with somebody. So if you're sure that you know something, you're probably coming from a position of some strength, some confidence, and you may use that differently. Some people may feel like they have to assert that they know something or tell you what they know, and other people will simply be confident that they have an understanding of what's going on and just be able to listen to others and receive what people offer. On the other hand, I'm not sure I can think of any time when not knowing is not a position of vulnerability. When you don't know something, you're probably always feeling a little bit less like you have your footing. You're not, not sure what's going to happen. People raised up this morning in our prayer concerns examples of what not knowing can look like. We don't know what may really be happening inside Zimbabwe. Just like sometimes we can look at a friend's life or a neighbor's life and you have a sense that something's not right. That someone may not be able to tell you for various reasons because it might threaten their safety, because they don't have the language for it, because they themselves are not aware or can't express their awareness to you. Sometimes you can't know from the outside what's going on on the inside of someone's life or their community. And sometimes we live with uncertainty in our own bodies, our, our own minds, when something's changing and we're not sure what it is and you can't put a finger on it and people start by all the diagnostics and a lot of doctors will tell you it's basically trying to take away things and proving what it isn't before you can get to what it is. Right? Kind of like the way sculptors might peel away what was in the stone to find what was really in there. Our physicians may be exploring and trying to help us with answers by testing for what something isn't. And we have to live inside that uncertainty, and it's part of the human condition. And so then you ask, I couldn't find any prayers where Jesus said, I don't know. He said of others, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he asked a whole lot of questions, right? His whole preaching life, his whole teaching life was filled with questions. So when people asked him a question, he used sort of that Socratic method. Instead of just giving you a point blank answer and feeding you something, he asked back, well, what do you think about this? Or he would offer a story and wonder, what do you think is happening there? He tends to answer question with question as opposed to helping people have some simple, pat answer for life and faith and what it means to be a human being in a complicated world where we are called to love and justice. He challenged people to live inside uncertainty to live inside the question and to become comfortable with not knowing, with not being certain of what the answer was, but perhaps figuring out what it wasn't, and living in a time of tension and waiting until something unfolded and people came to their own understanding or peace with the situations that were in front of them, or came to a point of such restlessness that they tipped over into advocacy and action and change making. To live in not knowing is to live with vulnerability and uncertainty. It is to live in connection with each other, with our God, and with our world. Because we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen to this earth. This earth that warms up when it shouldn't warm up and floods and has fires and all the wrong times and places. We're not sure what this creation will be for our children. And if there's one great source of not knowing, it is indeed our children. They will ask us questions and they will want to know why is the sky blue? Why do I have a belly button? Is the Bible true? That was one of the questions that somebody got asked while they were driving with their child. <sighs> How do you answer that? How do you answer any of these questions? Parents are always on the adventure of not knowing. 
And our children will always be ahead of us because they will be observing and experiencing the world in ways that we never imagined. And they will bring those perceptions back to us and want to share them with us and ask us about them. And we're going to be following where they lead us. And sometimes we might have an answer, but a whole lot of time, parenting is a lot about not knowing what the answer might be. Especially the mystery and the puzzle and the journey of your own child and the other people with whom you have intimate relationships. Sometimes it's our parents or our siblings or our partners and our children and our dearest friends that are puzzle boxes and are trying to understand and be present, but we don't have an obvious answer. And I have to say that as a parent, one of the things that I absolutely learned was almost a reflection of what I should have been paying attention to in the scriptures. And that was when my daughter came to me and she had questions or problems or challenges and sometimes her form of intimacy, the way that she could be sure to make a connection with me was to argue with me. Mom! Right. Maybe a raised finger, definitely a raised voice, getting closer, getting louder. And me, I'm like, oh, I, I like it quiet. I like to avoid conflict. This is not my style. But my daughter taught me to stay engaged. And then she taught me, and it was a long and arduous process, and boy, was I the one learning, that sometimes I didn't have to have an answer. I didn't have to be right. I didn't have to be wrong. What I actually had to do was have a question. So that when she came to me with her spirits raised and her feelings high, whether they were aimed at me or someone else, and she was anxious and upset, it was really to be present to her and ask, how can I support you? How can I be present to you and help you? And then by asking that reflective question, she felt heard, she felt seen. I wasn't saying I'm the expert and I know how you feel and I know what's going on. I was allowing her to narrate her story to me. I was allowing her to be present to her own feelings, her own thoughts, and to take responsibility for them and to know that it's okay to not know but I'm there with you and I love you through everything and we'll figure it out. And we may not have the right answer right now. Maybe there isn't an easy answer. But if you want to stay in this conversation or this engagement, I will ride it out with you. And on the other side of it, you will know that I am still present to you and that is you and what you know about yourself and your own life and your own body and your own mind. You are the best teacher to teach me how to love you. No one else can teach me how to love you the way that you can teach me. And so when we are willing to say, I don't know, or to ask an open-ended question of those we love best who are the most complicated and the ones that will challenge us the most in our lives, we are allowing the ones we love to teach us how to love them and be present to them. And wasn't this modeled first by Christ, who in his questioning held us accountable for the lives that we live and what we see and say and experience in the world. And we, we the people who love God and follow God, answer those questions by sharing our story and our thoughts and our feelings. And God actually cared enough for us to become a human being and learn what it was like to live in a human body and to ask us questions about what that meant for us and to listen to us and see us and name us. And we got to teach God in that living body what it meant to be a woman, a widow, a mother, a person who was living with leprosy or blindness, who was other and unseeable by anyone else, who wouldn't ever be called to the table, who would never have their voice heard. He asked questions. And he let us tell him how to love us. And in that example, in every question he asked, he gave us a template for how to live with each other now. 
for how to be curious about each other, for how to see past the outside of someone to the inside of someone. And if they can't answer you, simply to be present to them anyway and live inside uncertainty of a question that may not have an easy answer or a direct answer or an immediate answer. Our lives are one long journey of questions and learning and growth. And this is the gift of the way that we follow. That in our prayer, and that in our loving, and that in our living, at our best, we are living inside a question. We are living knowing that we don't have to know everything. But perhaps along the way, we will get to know each other and love each other. And truly, that is what we are called to do as children of God. Thanks be to God. Please rise for Psalm 68. This is an echo of one of the verses that Gina read out for us from Corinthians. Though I may speak. And choir, pop up choir, could you come up front as our song leaders? We need you. You guys don't look very sure of yourself. <laughs> received many gifts in this world. We ask you now to be generous in the way that you are able.